Right, good evening everyone from uh, the uh, International Business School here in the University of Lincoln. Um, tonight is a very uh, prestigious occasion in our academic calendar when we uh, uh, carry out the awards ceremony for the uh, Technology 4 Challenge uh, 2020. Um, for those of you who don't know what that means, my colleague Eliseo will explain in detail uh, the background to the particular challenges um, associated with that um, initiative uh, very soon. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to say um, this would ordinarily be taking place in a far nicer venue um, and we'd all be together. But obviously, in these strange times that we live in at the moment, um, that unfortunately is not the case. Um, however, we are coming to you live across Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn and via our website as well. And the uh, proceedings will be recorded for those, for those of you who uh, want to show colleagues, friends and family, um, please do that. Um, so I'm going to uh, share some slides with you now. Um, and as you can see, tonight's uh, agenda, a bit of introduction from me. I'm, uh, I'm Profe uh, Associate Professor Gary Ramsden. I work in the uh, International Business School um, and I'm one of the logistics and operations um, lecturers, so uh, a vested interest in the activities that are going on here for me. Um, as I said, my colleague, Dr. Eliseo Velanta Perdomo, will explain the background to the challenges um, and those challenges that have taken place this year um, in a couple of minutes. And then we'll go on to our presentations. We've got four presentations this evening, all very interesting and all very different. Um, I want to thank our uh, students who've stepped up to the plate somewhat to represent their colleagues on these presentations. Again, ordinarily, we'd have all the uh, groups together, but sadly, we've just had to restrict ourselves to one representative from each group, given the circumstances. Um, there'll then be an audience poll, um, and my colleague will explain how that will work in a minute. And then we'll be joined by our boss, Dr. Craig Marsh, uh, Provost Chancellor and um, Director of the International Business School, and he'll talk a little bit about digital technologies um, and uh, new business models in the face of uh, the ongoing pandemic. So lessons learned so far and challenges for the future there, I'm sure. Um, in the background, Eliseo will be um, compiling the, res the votes so that we can give the results around uh, 1830. And um, we'll invite uh, our boss again, Craig Marsh, to close proceedings off. So we should be finished around... Uh, quarter to seven this evening. So, Eliseo, um, over to you. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, I am Eliseo Vilalta Perdomo. I am also an associate professor in the Lincoln International Business School. Um, I have been working with uh, Gary for several years on topics related to supply chain, uh, technologies, logistics, operations management, etc. And the conversation we have had uh, with a group of academics has to do with how can we connect um, real experiences uh, of our students with uh, experiences that also can benefit our communities. And that was the idea of uh, that was behind uh, this idea of developing the challenge. The challenge is, um, we call it challenge because we are using a particular strategy for, for uh, supporting this initiative. It's called challenge-based learning. And the idea is that through this challenge-based learning, you connect uh, in businesses and students, and you make them collaborate together in the development of uh, different ideas. In particular, we are very interested in the development of digital skills and capabilities inside Lincolnshire. So we are, we are focused on looking at how it is possible that our students acquire some experiences and at the same time support businesses on the development of things like uh, analytics or big data, uh, maybe blockchain, or the use of the cloud, the Internet of Things, or, or many other things that are available uh, in this concept. So our aim is twofold. For the students to increase employability, that's the main objective. We are trying to develop uh, entrepreneurial skills and also problem-solving uh, capabilities of our students. 
and we are very interested on in doing it uh, in the concept in the context of technology based uh, problems on the other side businesses have the opportunity to um, explore um, complex ideas and new business uh, opportunities by means of the use of this kind of digital technologies many things that um, are usually extremely complicated or complex and that uh, companies are too busy to do it so what we are trying to do is to support micro and small enterprises to do this the concept of the challenge based learning becomes with a big idea that in our concept was uh, supporting lincolnshire in the development of digital technologies then we develop a series of essential questions in particular how can digital technologies be used to support companies then we develop challenges based on different organizations that uh, was supported by the development of different questions activities and resources we identify ways of uh, developing some sort of implementation of these ideas uh, this implementation usually um, uh, is done in a second step because what we are working is also with the lincolnshire county council and the idea is that organizations that seem to be interested on developing um, their own uh, capabilities will be supported by uh, this organization to find additional funding we do a certain evaluation part of this evaluation is this ceremony in itself and then we do this publishing so we are very interested also to provide uh, the opportunity for others uh, to recognize uh, the opportunities that there are there and to show them that it is possible to use things like the UL challenge to develop their own businesses these are the challenges there are seven organizations working with us this uh, during this uh, event in the past we had other organizations helping us in this case uh, we focused in seven of them all these posters the posters that the students developed they were 35 groups that in, in 200 students working on these projects can be found in this website we will provide this link in the future for people to be able to check what people have been done the challenges were as i said seven different companies first of all rudox rudox is a medium-sized company that is dedicated to do uh, publishing they do uh, digital things but they also do traditional uh, printing and what they have been interested is on seeing how can they increase the sales in their organization because they have a big database of customers but uh, they don't have enough time to do a serious analysis on all the details so what they are asking is is there any possibility to do this kind of analysis in a form that is a little more or less automated and we save uh, uh, time and efforts for people and people becomes focused only in the area of production so we were discussing these kind of things yeah then there was a, a, a micro business lady rose uh, tea room what they were looking at was at, uh, how to create uh, a better um, and stronger uh, presence in in the websites and networking another one is um is um as ngo uh, acts trust they are uh, an organization that is doing several activities to support uh, people in need uh, within uh, within lincolnshire and their their focus was on developing a safe logistic plan uh, to increase uh, the support of the food bank that they are trying to develop uh, obviously the difficulty for them is that they don't they they they, they work based on volunteers and some of the activities need to be moved into more automated systems other organization is white seven lincoln they are an organization that provides uh, specialized transportation for people and what they want is to improve their visibility uh, so they were looking at how they can do a better digital marketing strategy another one was big sign uh, uh, they are uh, um, manufacturing organization that they they provide uh, signs industrial signs or the kind of signs that you want and they want to move into uh, a fully automated production so what they want is to do uh, this kind of online um, taking orders by online and people to use them 
The sixth is uh, the environmental sustainability team within the University of Lincoln. They have been working massively on developing uh, a environmental protection um, strategy within the university. They have been able to receive the accreditation of the 14, uh, the 14,000 accreditation ISO. And what they are looking is how can we change the um, uh, operations within the business school, and in particular what we call the David Chitt building, uh, in such a way that the impact, uh, the environmental impact is reduced. Finally, there is an organization that is not is not from Lincolnshire, they are from Nottinghamshire, and they work in the, they, they support people in the Sherwood Forest. Uh, they earn a, a big, uh, a big bid from the government uh, that is focused on the use of uh, G5, uh, uh, 5G, sorry, um, networking, and they want to use it for um, uh, supporting activities within the Sherwood Forest. One of the activities they want is to develop a, a robotic uh, implement or device that is able to look at the forest and identify health and, 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 and if there is a need for doing something. So there is a series of, uh, of organizations that have been supporting us. Some of them are commercial, others are NGOs, others are more related to consultancy and, 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 and research. Uh, so we have a nice variety of, of companies and, and, and groups that can be supported through this challenge. Now, it's important to notice that all this is a very small disclaimer. It's important to notice that uh, what we're looking here is not uh, doing consultancy. This is not exactly what we look. What we're looking in the challenge is that students uh, are, uh, will be able to develop original solutions uh, from uh, limited data. They are not constantly talking with the companies. They just receive uh, very few information because what we want is them uh, to, to think out of the box and try to be as original and creative as possible. And that means that in some ways, sometimes some of the information that is presented is not as accurate as expected. But, uh, but first of all, it's, it's done in good faith. And, uh, and what, import, what is important at the end is, the, uh, is to check the concept. Finally, uh, there are five, uh, five different uh, courses where students are involved. The business studies with professional practice, business management, business and marketing, sport business management, events management, and also we have some Erasmus exchange students that have been part of this, uh, of this course. So that's it. That's what the challenge-based learning implies. So it's moment, I think, to go for the presentations. And the first presentation is the presentation of uh, Viking Science. Um, Viking Science will be explained by every team, by two teams. But Viking Science, um, the, first, the first presentation of Viking Science will be done by James Allison. He is representing a, a team of several students. But as Gary was explaining, he is the only one that can be uh, online at the moment. So I give this space to James to explain the situation. Brilliant. Thank you. Ah, there I am. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for um, thank you for being here uh, and taking the time out your evening to watch our presentations. So like I say, ours uh, is about Viking signs. Uh, just to give you a little flavor of our group, if you could share my screen, please. Thank you. Uh, there are, give me a second. Here we go. Look. Technology, never my friend. Uh -huh. There are six people in our group. We are mainly made up of business and management students, uh, but we do have, uh, uh, we dabble a bit in marketing and business studies as well. So there's quite a, a good range of knowledge within our team. So our challenge, as I say, is all about Viking science. Um, to give a little bit of knowledge on Viking science, to kind of tell you about what they are. Uh, they are a local science company uh, based out of Grantham in Lincolnshire. Uh, they've been in operation since 1986 and employ around 20 people and deliver a seven-figure turnover in revenue. Uh, recently, they have expanded online into the safe design market, and to do that, they've invested heavily in some efficient printers to do so. 
So we had a look at the company um, together and tried to figure out any problems that we could find. So we we found that there seems to be some issues that stem from the company's uh, corporate alignment. Now that's across both marketing platforms and across technology platforms. Um, so when we first looked at their website, we noticed that the company hosts a range of different websites. Uh, <clears throat> Each website offers a different thing, and each website is in a, a various state of repair, either very modern or out of date. Uh, and that continuates onto the website text itself. So some of it has uh, lots of up-to-date text, and some of the text is very out of date, claiming things that actually the company doesn't do, doesn't operate in that way anymore. Equally, the company has a, a really efficient lean production capability now because of all its investment in its fancy printers. But they don't talk about this on the website. They merely mention that it is available for next day delivery. So it's not really promoting something that's very good at. Moving on to the technology platforms. Um, now, in, in terms of uh, Viking signs versus their competitors, if let's say I want to order five signs and then I want to order a custom sign as well, if I go onto the Viking sign website, I can't do that. There's no online uh, design platform system there but there are on their competitors. So no doubt Viking Science has been losing out there. Uh, equally, there's no ability for customers to track their order through the Viking Science website either. So if I order something, yes, it might be delivered the next day, but I'll only know it's progress once I get a tracking number from, say, the Royal Mail. Um, adding on to that, I don't need to go into each step of how uh, the system goes from order to print, but needless to say, there, there there's a handful of CRM and print management systems uh, which cannot seamlessly communicate. They all require some stage of human intervention to go from order to print. Okay. So what's our solution? Well, our solution is to comprehensively refocus the Viking Science brand. And we believe we can do that by redirecting its USP to specifically promote their responsive lean manufacturing capabilities. Uh, the way we plan to do that is by creating an automated design software which can be used upon their website that is able to encompass all sign making formats that they wish to use. Now, building into that, we also want to include a customer orientated, a real time notification system uh, which regularly updates customers throughout the order fulfillment progress. So think of Uber Eats, you know, when you order your takeaway, you get a notification when they're cooking it, you get a notification when it's in the car on the way to be delivered to you. Same principle. And we also, in terms of Industry 4.0, uh, what kind of smart technology we want to use, uh, in order to remove the human element from that automated process I talked about earlier, from print, to, sorry, from design to print, uh, we want to use a basic text profanity filter and then a design parameter AI to automatically proof any work that goes through to print. That removes the employee involvement, they could be redirected in the business, and it makes it a more efficient process. On the other side, in terms of the marketing side, we want to amalgamate all the websites onto one singular group platform. Through that platform, all the queries uh, and design questions can be answered. Now, to do that, we'll redefine the company website map, so remove any out-of-date copyright information, and we'll repopulate that with a uh, much more succinct, clear narrative, which, which, which gives customers confidence and del through delivering a bit more clarity. So that brings us to a stage where Viking signs are... are at the same technical level as their competitors. But, but from our perspective, that wasn't enough. That doesn't give them a long-term edge. So long-term, our ambition is to see Viking Science metamorphose into a technology company. So what does that mean? Well, to us, that means a full-term investment in their platform software. So yes, they could quite easily go out and find a third-party software to put on the website, but that doesn't give them an advantage competitively. So we believe that they should full-time invest in a design program and they can continually develop the software to extend its applicational uses. So beyond just sign making, it can be used for art rendering, uh, number plate printing, et cetera, et cetera. You, other uses that go on far beyond just sign printing. Once there is a proof of concept and a usable piece of software there, they can then look to franchise and embed that into other local companies. Um, so when you can offer that to other print firms as licensable software, you then are able to create a local network of printers. And the ability, the advantage that you give uh, uh, there is that actually you have this local network where if, say, me, I'm, I'm, I'm in Norwich at the moment, let's say I order 
a, a print sign and I need it on the same day, I can now go and get it because my local printer can print it instantly from the website without it needing any human interaction. That instantly meets the customer demand and benefits the lean manufacturing principle even more. Once you've got that nailed down, this is where the money really uh, starts to become quite big. I, I was trying to think of a fancy academic term and I've got to be honest, I couldn't. So I just thought, you know what, I'll call it what it is, roll with the big boys. So what, is, what does that mean? Um, the principle is basically trying to synergize what Viking Science could be doing here with what the big players in the marketplace are doing in their respective marketplaces. So think Argos, who offer same day delivery now. It's the whole reason Sainsbury's bought them in the first place. Uh, think Amazon with their prime next day delivery. So if you can coalesce uh, this Viking software upon their respective market platforms, so if they can embed it onto Amazon's website, Amazon can then take automated printers and install them in their warehouse fulfillment centers. <clears throat> so rather than uh, them having to be shipped to a center and then sent out via the original manufacturer, Viking Signs, actually, as soon as the order is clicked, they could be printed and then shipped out straight away. And what that enables uh, the business like Amazon or Argos to do is, is actually meet their same day, next day delivery deadlines uh, and offer an extra string to their bow, an extra uh, offering to their customers, which makes them a better, more well-rounded business. Now, in terms of how to make money off that, well, Viking Science could charge a hefty licensing fee or they could charge a percentage sale figure to each order. So what our long-term solution does is it decentralizes production away from Viking Signs uh, through the incorporation of a, a, a fully automated uh, design to print software. It reduces uh, Viking's reliance upon attracting new sales, something that hasn't always been massively easy on an online marketplace, uh, and reduces their physical production obligations, while simultaneously creating a much more lucrative and passive income model for their business. I truly believe, along with my team, that this would turn a seven-figure company into an eight-figure company and long-term would create a very successful business. I hope that made sense. I apologize if I went on a bit too long, uh, but thank you for listening. And yes, I'll hand back to you now. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, James. That was really interesting uh, and very informative. We'll now move on to uh, the Axe Trust with uh, Team Two, and their representative is uh, Bashkim Muka. Good evening, Bashkim. Uh, hello, I'm, uh, I'm Bashkin Mucker. I'm representing Team 2 for X Trust, and I'll be presenting our operation. So if you want to move to the slides. One second. Right. Uh, this is the team I worked with, and these are the courses we do. It's a mix of business studies and just business management. This is our presentation. Uh, I've decided to call it Scienty 4.0, a structural upgrade. It's based on the Axe Trust challenge. And the challenge at hand, Axe Trust is a Lincoln-based charity that's mission is to empower people and eliminate poverty. We were given this challenge to create a waste food hub to reduce waste and increase efficiency in the operation. We tackled this process with implementation of technology, which I believe to be a very vital aspect of modern day society. Our concept, the idea is a, log a logistical communication system due to Axe Trust uh, due to Axe Trust proposal, a waste food hub, we decided to create a website that would be a space for all the collation of data for applications, donations and volunteers. It will be a space for all stakeholders. We want to increase efficiency for all involved. The individuals requiring the food packages will also be provided with data referencing, so they know where to go for mental health services, domestic violence hotlines, and refugees in the local and uh, refugees in the local areas. So we can help the people in crisis get out of the situations they're in. It will also provide a space for feedback for stakeholders, which is very important, I believe, for an organisation to evolve, so it can continue to evolve and get bigger and bigger with better ideas. For our strengths, for our SWOT analysis. We uh, believe the strengths to be the redu a reduction of waste from donators. Food waste is a huge problem in modern day society. And by increasing efficiency and minimizing the, uh, the date it takes to send food from the donations to the uh, food bank, we can reduce the waste of the food. 
It's a directory of information for increased efficiency, which has the potential to help people get back on their feet, which is vital, especially for a pro-social charity. The weaknesses, however, are the issue of storage still remains. To combat this, you will need uh, money and government grants and things like that to uh, tackle the waste food hub in a physical sense instead of a virtual one. Whereas the opportun opportunities for our solution is the fact that it can expand and grow beyond locally. It can connect charities and support networks across the country, which is uh, vital because the true goal of Axe Trust is to eliminate all poverty. The threats, however, re requires initial costing for a website, so the grants will be required and donators will need to do extra work beyond a stock check because a charity needs to be flexible in a sense like this. We'll need to know what stock we'll be getting and how we're going to package these. So the information on the website, we'll have to input that so we can all know. <clears throat> Within pro-social organisations, all objectives are important. However, for this operation, going beyond the initial startup cost, there'll be a focus on speed, quality and flexibility. Costs will be low due to the fact that the website costs are minimal. Utilising volunteers will be minimal cost as well. And also places of worship are where you will deliver these food packages and give them to the people in need. The reason speed is important, as these food boxes are, necess are a necessity for these people, it's a short-term fix to save people's livelihoods. Quality is vital due to the perishability of food. Um, you can't have anyone getting ill, and the donators of the food know this, however, it will be liable for it if we provide the food. And flexibility is very important because of the inconsistencies of donations. We, know, we won't know what we're getting until the day arrives. Um, then we'll need to package it and we'll need to be flexible for the people so we can separate into age groups, dietary restrictions, family size. For us, it's a pro-social need, uh, a charity. It's, uh, it's necessary in society. The strategic aim to empower people and eliminate poverty is a pro-social one. It's a caring for others. Societies and communities need to get together and face the modern day challenges together and uh, to bridge the gap of inequality. It was unfortunately been formed through government policy and lack of funding and services such as mental health services and care and support. Limitations, however, mainly revolve around the original issue of cost or require investment from projects like the Big Society Capital that was put in place to use reserve capital to fund social projects. Another limitation is the use of volunteers. Initiatives should be taken, need to be taken to put in place so we can get potential volunteers from universities and things like and people in local support work and refuges so we can all work together and it can benefit everyone involved. For micro to macro, however, since Axe Trust is a, link, uh, is a local Lincoln based charity and they want to eliminate all poverty, which is a very large scale goal, the local physical approach would struggle to expand and grow beyond that. Our solution has the potential to grow and expand beyond locally, connecting charities across the country, providing a network of support that goes beyond food bank usages and also tackles influences on why people are in crisis in the first place in a bid to fix the root problems. Statistics. The uh, Axe Trust in 2018 recorded 21,600 meals provided from April 17th to March 18th, which unfortunately is 30% of those people were under the age of 18. In the UK, 14.3 million people are below the poverty line and 1.6 million people required a three day food package in 2019, up from 24,000 in 2008. In conclusion, the statistics show the harsh reality of poverty in society we live in. We in the UK have the fifth highest GDP in the world, but the system continues to fail the individuals. I believe equal opportunities are right and hopefully with this operation, we can reverse the damage done and create a structurally sound society that as a nation we could be proud of. Thank you for listening. Uh, I'll pass it back on to Alicia. Thank you, Bashkim. Uh, very interesting again. Um, we turn to another challenge presented by our colleagues at Viking Signs now, which Team 3 addressed. And uh, Guy, I'll introduce you to the group um, and I'm looking forward to your presentation on um, your particular challenge. So. Uh, over to you, sir. Hi, I'm Guy. Uh, my presentation is also on Viking Signs. If you could just switch onto my uh, slides, uh, I'll just I'll show the team. Okay, so within my team, um, to help me present it, create this presentation, 
with myself, William Durrance and Leroy Bergmeier. Uh, we're, conveniently, we're all business and management students. Um, but anyway, here we go. So this presentation is on Viking Signs and how we intend for them to capture the online market by enhancing Viking Signs' company website to help ensure an effective transition to becoming fully automated. Viking Signs is an industrial safety sign manufacturing firm. The company has high levels of automation and wants to become fully automated in the future. They want to release, they also want to release a fully customizable production of art line for, for art, of artwork for online customizable products. Analyzing the market that Viking Signs operates in it becomes apparent it's extremely competitive. This is due to two things we found. It was because of low product differentiation between competitors and customers facing zero switching costs to look at alternate products from other websites. This made the um, market extremely price-based and highly volatile. Analyzing Viking Signs itself, it became apparent that they had strength of having a good reputation with things like five-star Trustpilot review scores, and they have a strength of selling a wide range of products, uh, helping to satisfy many customer needs. Their major weakness is that they have poor websites currently at the minute. They currently have three websites and each one seems to interact poorly with customers. In the future, they have a major opportunity to become fully automated and expand further across the country. Although the company constantly faces threats of being undercut by competition or becoming fully automated too early and almost doing it ineffectively, wasting their capital. In an interview, with Darren from Viking Signs, he stated that only 2.5% of website users actually buy from them. The statistic helped to start our research and we decided to look into this. Looking at the Viking Signs' main company website, we found basic data traffic analysis from January. It showed that they have 218 monthly visits then, a bounce rate meaning people entering and then almost instantaneously leaving the website of 50% and an average visiting time of 34 seconds. Comparing this to their main competitor, Safety Science for Less, they gained a um, monthly visits of 32,000, a bounce rate of 73.69%, and an average visiting time of five minutes and 21 seconds. All of this data helped us to come up with the idea that it was imperative that Viking Signs improves its company website, ensuring that it becomes more coordinated and customer order orientated. This would be in order to increase their conversion rate, which is currently 2.5%, and to get more people to look on their websites, stay on it, and buy off it. We decided they could achieve this via doing three things. One, they could hire external parties, such as data architects or web design companies. The data architects would be able to look at the company's existing data architecture. From this, they could pull out relevant product data. The web design companies would be able to use this relevant product data to formulate a new website. We also thought that they should work with employees and use their insight. They could do this via a form of a project or simply emailing ideas for a new website. We thought they should do this because employees work with their website 24-7 and they may know something that the external parties do not. Finally, we believe that they should achieve this by implementing targeted adverts. Um, they should do this via social media platforms such as LinkedIn, Facebook or Twitter. Um, and hopefully what this will do is help them to market their products to a more select range of customers who are more likely to buy off them, helping to effectively increase their social selling presence. Analyzing the benefits of this solution, we found that because the website becomes more coordinated, it'll become more streamlined and almost easier to manage for the company. We also found that cups, customers will associate the brand with more quality as the website will be of high quality and high caliber and the customer perception of quality will increase. We also found that customer ordering time may be reduced. Uh, this would be due to customers understanding how to effectively use the website so that they would, um, wouldn't have to do things like call up, for example. And finally, we believe that they could potentially gain the upper hand on competition. So for example, they may gain the upper hand on safety signs for less as they have a more understandable and superior website that customers enjoy using more. Although analyzing the constraints of this solution, 
we found that one major problem would there would be high costs associated with hiring external parties. So a data architect can cost around £605 a day, apparently, and web design companies can cost uh, £2,000 or more. We also found custom failure may occur. So Viking Signs, for example, may put all this money into creating a new website, but it doesn't guarantee that the customers are going to use it well. And this could almost lead to a waste of their resources. We also felt that um, as we don't know the current workload of employees, getting them involved in a project may be a terrible idea, as they may almost feel that it's extra work for them that they can't handle, leading to stress or resentment towards the company. We also found, due to COVID-19, that now many more businesses have gone online. And we feel that our solution may help many small businesses also. And it won't really help get them online, but it'll help them to almost effectively compete online against larger companies. In conclusion, Viking Signs ho has a major opportunity here to get themselves ahead of the competition by creating a superior website. They also have an opportunity to get themselves in the best position possible to become fully automated in the future. Although this solution seems risky, if well managed by doing things like testing, for example, it should work well. Thank you for listening. I shall now hand you back to our uh, Gary. Many thanks, uh, Guy. Another very interesting presentation um, with uh, some really thought provoking discussion there. Uh, last but not least, we have Team 4, who uh, are working with uh, Want7. And I'm going to introduce Bradley, who's uh, been kind enough to step up to the plate on behalf of his colleagues and explain to us what uh, what they've been up to. So, Bradley, over to you. So, hi, guys. My name's Brad, and our team have been working on White7, which is a chauffeur business within Lincoln. If you could put that slide up, please. Okay. So... Uh, White Seven, as I said, chauffeuring business in Lincoln, and we decided to move their digital marketing campaign online. Uh, they pride themselves on uh, luxury and an individual experience. Every company, company trying to take your wedding to the extra, like the next place it could be. Sorry. Uh, the reason we chose online marketing strategy is because it's the missing piece for White Seven's business and its online engagement. Uh, White Seven have a really good business model. They got all the people they need, they've got the cars they need, they just don't quite have it with the advertisement and their marketing. Uh, we realized it through analyzing the company uh, with the biggest strengths of the company being the clear target demographic of weddings and the luxury personalized experience provided by the company. Uh, however, there were weaknesses such as little to no online presence with no clear brand image, but social media accounts are already set up, which is positive as they'll already be, have existing customers following them, hopefully. The biggest threat to White 7 Lincoln's business is competitors with larger fleets as White 7 is only down to the single car. Uh, opportunities. There are opportunities to create targeted and sales ready traffic through brand image and promotion and promotion increasing the customer base. Uh, the features that we wanted our solution to include were easy usage, uh, easy to use analyt analytical features, the ability to access the target demographic, flexibility advertisement, a platform that's trusted by customers, and last but not least, uh, the solution to be relatively inexpensive. We discovered that a way to meet all this criteria would be through paid social media advertising. Over time, there has been a shift from traditional advertising with the increase of internet usage. Now people consume more advertising online than in print media, print media radio, or television. Social media offers benefits to business owners as it allows them to reach out to their customers and gain the attention of more people and more potential customers. A recent social marketing industry report has shown that social media enables businesses to get exposure, traffic and gain market insight. Social media gives business owners a whole new way to engage customers by allowing them to get personal with your customers and form a bond of trust with them. By replying to the concerns of your customers and asking for their opinions, you can enhance customer satisfaction while getting more traffic for your site, which further promotes your business and will educate your users about how your services work. Social media enhances the entire experience as it makes it vastly more visible to the public because if it was word of mouth, you have to meet somebody who's already been part of that company or use their service in their wedding. Whereas on Instagram, you could be scrolling through your feed like you do every day or most people and you'd see an advert targeted to things that you usually search on. 
market research because search, social media is such an efficient way of connecting people with people you can use search, social media to contact conduct marketing research you can conduct surveys or polls on public stories and you can ask people to offer their reviews about your products or services you can also see what your competitors are doing which will be helpful in planning your own business strategies such as what kind of service or products you should be launching next they should help you realize gaps in the market where you could fill a service that isn't already being provided a good strong social media strategy can require investment but as with any advertising campaign the return on the investment is is important when you interact with your customers and you form a bond of trust with them this illustrates your interest in your customers and their experience and free and their experience frequently translates to further sales social media is very inexpensive when compared to other advertising and marketing tools that are available to indi individuals and businesses the social media tools are free for everyone to use by simply spending some time working on your social media presence for a few minutes a day you can see great benefits of increased exposure and sales and develop a good relationship with your customers which will lead to more sales and a stronger brand image uh, this can all be done from the comfort of your own home without employing any marketing manager which can be very costly especially to small business such as white seven traditional advertising and business promotion tools require the help of professionals where this can be done by yourself at home uh, so the market needs the next three slides will cover the market needs and uh, so white seven can benefit from instagram marketing as it's a really really cheap form of advertising and it's much cheaper than alternate forms of advertising such as wedding fairs that the owner currently uses uh, the average cost per thousand or cpm uh, is ten dollars and 78 for a thousand people to see a digital advertisement where traditionally it costs 1092 dollars and it's easy to appeal to a, larger, to a larger target audience as only people who are interested in your services will be hit by Instagram's advertising algorithm and show you the ad. Uh, it's more effective than traditional uh, methods. As I said, more people see it. A lot of young people use Instagram. A lot of people getting married use Instagram. Uh, it's instant marketing. Once your advert has been accepted by them, it will be posted the same day. It's easy to analyze the success of the marketing because Instagram analytics uh, allow the business to easily track their investments and view the stats of the adverts and how many people have seen it and what age the people are what sex the people are is pretty useful uh, and it's all well and good to have increased traffic to white seven social media accounts but without high quality content it's unlikely to be effective which brings us to the second part of our two-step solution uh, a curated brand image customers want to be able to visualize the part of a vendor that will the part a vendor will play in their big day and in such a saturated market, it's important that White Seven's social media accounts stress the luxury and dependable services that they provide. This can be done by uh, creating a color story. This means picking a color scheme sort of that fits in the company. So you have a white and black one, we, we decided. And it makes a social media account look more, more cohesive and profe professional to match the brand identity because you wouldn't want an Instagram page or a website that's all over the place. You want it to be to the point smart professional especially if it's to do with your wedding day uh, we'd also use high quality images uh, this can be done by the wedding party the car is actually at if the photographer has any pictures of the car you can kindly ask the bride and the groom and the photographer if they'll be able to use it uh, they could collaborate with other wedding vendors for photo shoots which again lowers the price because everybody's there sharing the same cameras at the same time but this also opens you up to um the competition seeing your shots and uh, possibly trying to one up here um or you could take high quality pictures of the vehicle with a mobile device at wedding venues most smartphones these days have really good cameras that can be uploaded to instagram relatively easily social media advertising will not reach everybody for example the older generation who do not either have access to social media or do not understand how it works will not see it in this case word of mouth advertising would be more effective to reach this target demographic however the average age for marriage in the uk is 30 years old and the largest group of social media users especially on instagram is between 25 and 35 years old we, are, we anticipate the target market will be reached and the demographic is sorted constraints so an online presence means there's increased exposure to competitors rival companies are able to gain information of white seven strategy and target market However, having a strong social media presence to increase sales would outweigh the likely effects of this. 
Uh, social media platforms allow White7 to re receive feedback quickly, which is seen as a benefit and a constraint. But the possible disadvantage of this is that competitors and potential customers are able to view negative feedback and only really pick up on that. Uh, although this can help resolve problems quickly, demonstrating, oh sorry, although this can cause problems quickly, if White7 demonstrate, uh, demonstrate their willingness to adapt and ability to tailor the customer's experiences and needs, customers will see that they're constantly improving and they'll pick them for their business. Um, our final thoughts were we really, really enjoyed working on this. Uh, it was really nice using a real life business as a essay topic. And yeah, that's our presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Bradley. Uh, a really interesting final slide there of your team. Um, looking very Hi. small, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> some, uh, some interesting points there for White 7, particularly in view of the fact that they're going to be trying to get their business going again, um, hopefully soon post uh, COVID lockdown. I'm sure there's lots of people waiting to uh, get their marriages sorted. So uh, very interesting. Thank you once again. Uh, I'm now going to hand back to my colleague, Eliseo, who's going to explain to everybody out there how they can uh, tell us which ones they like the best. Eliseo, over to you for the audience vote explanation. First of all, thank you for all of you who, who have maintained the attention up to now. And now is the moment of voting. Um, what we are asking you is to go into this particular um, direction on internet. You can do it on any kind of device. You can do it by using the telephone. You can do it however you prefer. So it's called Poll Everywhere. And what you will identify on this, um, uh, on this direction, on this uh, internet address, is a question. The question is about uh, ranking. So you will have to provide on the top which is the best presentation that you consider and at the bottom the one that you don't consider that is the best so you can rank them from the first on the top to the fourth in the bottom yes so please uh, spend a little of time on trying to go into uh, this uh, poll everywhere poll.com dash eliseo and do your voting Meanwhile, uh, this will be open for the next 10 minutes, 5-10 minutes, so don't worry about it. Um, meanwhile, we ask um, uh, Dr. Marsh, who is the Pro Vice Chancellor and the Director of our business school, to uh, give us a, a, an explanation on digital technologies and new businesses, and particularly um, from a perspective uh, of the pandemic. So. Who will win, Dr. Marsh? Many thanks, Eliseo. And uh, let, let me just start by um, congratulating our four presenters on, 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 a, on a fabulous set of presentations. I was very enjoyed listening to it. And I, I know my role, I'm a sort of interlude, uh, just to, uh, to separate the, what was in a series of really good presentations from, the, um, from what everybody's waiting for, which is, which is the vote, of course. And, um, and, and of course, Eliseo has also um, presented me with a, a really interesting title. Who will win? Well, of course, the new, new business models will, uh, will win. So, uh, so this could be a pretty short presentation, right? So there's my conclusion already. Uh, but I'll just spend a little bit longer on it. I'm not going to put any slides up. I'm uh, just going to give a couple of, uh, couple of reflections on, on some of the great uh, presentations that, uh, that you've already seen. Uh, so, um, uh, because I think, actually, you've already done a lot of what I, I'll refer to a little bit, which is, uh, which is just to dig in a little bit into what we mean by, by business models. Um, but before I do that, I thought it was quite interesting to think back to our last um, uh, presentation evening, which was in, uh, in December, uh, when I was talking about predictions and, and I was discussing some of the difficulties about, um, particularly related to technology, uh, about how you make predictions. And, and look, here we are in, um, in, a, in a very different world and who could have predicted uh, where we are now? And we're, we're in the middle of probably what is called a, um, a black swan event, which is, uh, and black swan events have been identified by a guy called Nicholas uh, Nassim Taleb, who um, talked about these massive things that happen in the world that, that really change everything, um, but actually happen in a way that is, 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 has some degree of, of regularity. The trouble is we can't predict them, or at least that's his argument that we can't predict these events. They're outside the realm of regular expectations, of regular of analogies. So the question is, what do we do? in a world where there are so many things that, that create big shifts in, in the way in our economies, in our, in our business, uh, and in society. 
And, and one, of the, one of the ways of, of thinking about that is, is about how you identify um, weak signals in what's going on around you. And the work that our students have been doing and the tools that they've been learning, that you've been learning, allow you really to, to dig into uh, whether into technology, into society, into, into the economy, putting all of those things together and get to know a business really well, such that through those analytical tools, you can maybe start to identify some of those weak signals that show you something about the way the world is going. And I think that's part of the, the, the process of understanding um, technology and new, and new business models. I just have to look at a couple of the things where that's gone wrong. Um, and one of my favorite stories about business models is, uh, is very old tech, um, <clears throat> which is the story of the ice makers going back 100 years. And uh, there's, a, there's this huge industry around the world of, of companies whose, whose job it was, whose business model it was, was to find, uh, to capture, to, to, to get, um, transport and store ice um, for refrigeration. And, and of course, somebody invented the refrigerator and these companies just tried really, really, really hard to get their business models right. So they, they uh, made their transport more efficient. They, they found a cheaper way of getting ice out of the ground. Um, they made their storage last longer in the size. But of course, their business had been wiped out by the refrigerator. They just didn't see it coming. So there's some aspects of this um, technology. It's not a new story in some ways. Now, there's a, if you think of technology in the broadest sense of the world, well, well, there's one, one example of where it completely wiped out an entire industry. So what if you were able to predict that and you were the person who saw the early signs of what refrigeration was going to be? Well, in the modern world, we, we've had a similar sort of thing. Who would have predicted the black swan event of the internet arriving um, just over 20 years ago, which some of us are old enough to remember? So part of this, this thing about, uh, about new tech, um, and, and, uh, which I think is related or consistent um, and is similar to where we are now, is being able to spot those signs of something going on in the area that you're interested in um, and being able to react to those signs. So it's not about spotting it, it's being able to react to it. So I'll give you an example of something that's going on in modern technology right now. Um, I'm sure you've all have heard of LiDAR, which is the bit of kit that goes on top of uh, cars that uh, Google have developed in particular, um, which is what allows them to be able to drive um, autonomously, drive remotely. And, and the cost of, of LIDARs, is one of those, uh, those weak signals, um, has gone as following. I'll just, I'll just tell you what it looks like. So in uh, 2012, the cost of that bit of kit was $70,000. In 2019, the last time I checked, it was down to $500. And somebody has predicted that it may be in by 2025, $50. Have a look at the cost of battery power, which is going to be so essential to the future economy. And what's that, what that's doing? The cost of solar panels. And often the cost of technology is a really good way of spotting an, an early sign that something is going to play a very big part in, in, in our future lives. And the trick, of course, is seeing that before it starts to become what we've identified as an exponential curve. So if you think about those prices of LIDAR, for example, that is, if you tracked it on a graph, an exponential curve, or if like a reverse exponential curve, if you want to think about it in the, in the, in the decline of its price. And the idea is to be able to see one of those curves happening just at the early stages of it. So the point at which, you know, it's just starting to tick up and that curve, I'll put it a little away from the screen, just started to tick up in the curve and before other people spot it and other people actually see that curve and start to exploit it. And if you think about the pandemic, of course, um, with, with massive hindsight, one of the things about a black swan event is we tend to explain things rationally after the event. But one of the things that was indicative of the pandemic is that there were some early signs of it. And of course, the way that governments have reacted differently to, to the pandemic has been they, they, they reacted differently to seeing those early signs and seeing the warnings. It's arguable that our government reacted maybe two or three weeks too late to the pandemic. What they could have done is got a little bit more ahead of that curve and the early signs of it and got on with it. The trouble is, these, are, these things are so difficult to spot and they're so unprecedented, you've really got to know your stuff to be able to identify where that trend is happening. And the work that you, the students have been doing in their own areas, and I've seen in these presentations, is taking a look at some of those early signs of stuff going on, and then being able to see what is happening, and perhaps be able to react to it, maybe develop a new business model, um, perhaps clean up the market, like Amazon did, with digital storage, um, before anybody else does. So that's one of the signs. Now, what are we doing in terms of business models? Well, 
The other thing about a pandemic um, is, is it gives business leaders a great opportunity to work on their businesses as well as in their businesses because sometimes those businesses are suspended or they're or automatically just taking a little bit step back and saying, hang on a second, am I in the right kind of business? Am I working on that? And you guys have been doing a lot of that work for some of our local businesses recently. So, so working on that, so there's basically two bits. What is a business model? So there's basically two bits to it. The part that we've just been talking about is a first question. How do you cap, how do you create value? And that's that's something that is generic for all businesses. So one of the things that you're looking at at the moment, well, and a lot of you have been doing, is looking at some very specific types of technology. You've been talking about webinars. You've been last last one this presenter talking about the use of Instagram. First question, and you've all touched on it in various ways, is what is our business going to do to create value? And just to say the last example of, of White 7, you started to get to it. You know, we, we, we can create some value around this um, accessibility luxury offer to people having wealth. So really uh, identifying how you're going to how you're going to uh, create value in strategic terms. That's your anal analysis of the market, understanding the custom offer, and maybe spotting some of those early technology trends. The second question, and this is your business model, this is more of an internal consideration, is how you capture that value. And one of the things that technology has done over the last 20 years is create new business models for capturing value. So you know, if you think about some of the ones that we know and love, um, the platform businesses, some of them are purely platform businesses. So a good example, I guess, is Airbnb. All it does is provide a platform whereby people who want something meet up with other people who've got something that they can, they can offer. Uh, and that's how they uh, that's how they both create that value. They spotted the creation of value, people wanting to stay somewhere nice and cheap in lots of different parts of the world um, with, a, with a platform that helps to capture that value by putting the two things together. So you then got the other end of the extreme with Amazon, which is just cleaning up across the entire value chain. So, so the, the capturing of value part is having a really clear idea about which bits of the value chain you are going to deliver value into, whether you're going to be a purely platform business like Airbnb, or are you going to be a complete end-to-end -end service in the way that Amazon are providing? So those are also some of the ways that you uh, that you can think about uh, de developing and designing your business model. How are you going to um, look out for those weak signals, those weak signs, identify a way of, of creating value uh, based on what you've identified, uh, on those weak signals that you've analyzed, and then how are you going to build a business model that actually manages to capture that value and turn the inputs into outputs and how, how far down the value chain you're gonna are you gonna go. And there's a couple of examples there um, of where uh, of, of people of businesses that have done that in different ways. Uh, for another great example, if any of you know the Indian market, and one I've mentioned a couple of times, about uh, four years ago, five years ago, uh, one of the great conglomerates in India, uh, Reliance, launched the biggest startup in the world by value by market cap at the time called Geo, a four and a half billion dollar startup. That's a, that's a mega startup. And what they did was that this, this company, JIO, they, they, they basically decided to completely um, sweep the board in terms of mobile technology. So they, this is an example of somebody who's decided to capture value by taking the entire value chain. And that's the, that's the analysis they've done. So what Geo do is they um, provide the mobile phone. They've also a, a, a social need for this as well. So they're, they're, they want to make, um, to make the internet accessible to a poorer set of population. So they provide the mobile phone, they provide the apps that go onto the mobile phone, they provide um, the, an the antennae that broadcast the signal to those mobile phones, they provide the shops by which you can buy those mobile phones, and they provide the uh, internet uh, service that will, um, that, through which you'll access those ones. It's a real complete end-to-end -end service. So Geo is a great example of, of the way that they've captured the entire um, value chain, and they're doing very well out of it. Of course, if you've got the money um, of, of um, uh, of the boss of, of, of Renault, the, of, of Reliance, then that's the kind of thing you can do. So, so that's another part of the consideration. So this prediction thing, I'm going to come back to it, and I'll just finish there. So sorry for rambling on a bit, but uh, hopefully it's provided the right kind of interlude for the, for the guys while you're doing the voting. So this, this prediction thing, is, I think, is really quite interesting, because the other thing that you see happening here, and I'd just like to touch on the theme of resilience in this period of our, of our pandemic. How are companies being resilient here? Well, one way they're doing, of course, is, is as I said, reinventing their business model. The other thing that they're tending to do is use uh, a tool called scenario planning, um, which is a way of trying to understand all of the uncertainties of, of the future and take some of those um, analyses that you've been doing and, and do a systematic method 
uh, or go through a systematic method of identifying all of the potential futures that you may that may come about, and then as a result of that analysis, start to think through what kinds of what what you need to do to shift your business model, if at all, in response to the current crisis. So it's not about dealing with the here and now; it's thinking about where is this going to take us in a few years. What what's the what's the next two to three years, five years, maybe even longer term going to look like? Let's look at all of the scenarios that that represents. And let's think about what kind of business we can create that actually will deal with any number of those different scenarios. So that's the, that's the idea of scenario planning, which is something that a lot of our resilient businesses are now doing, particularly if their business model has been threatened by the, by the current pandemic. So there's a process thing there. But you know what? One of the things that often makes the difference, it's about attitude, right? It's about the attitude of the business leader, of the people in those businesses, often the individuals. Now, just look at what's happened with the furloughing scheme. You know, some businesses, a lot of businesses have no choice to exploit the furloughs. So the government is now employing a fifth of workers in the UK. It's an astonishing um, uh, uh, scheme. But, but what it tends to do is it means, well, I'm being paid by the government and therefore I'll do nothing. But what some businesses are doing is saying, well, actually, if we keep some of those employers, employees off furlough, maybe we can actually shift them to doing something else, which is a big risk to do. But it means that we're actually creating a new sort of future for our business. And the food industry in, in Lincolnshire is a really good example of that, where we have businesses where their, their value chain is dried up. Um, but what they're doing is they're shifting their workers, maybe not necessarily all of them. Um, to, and, a, and a fantastic example, my local pub, 300 yards down the road, they have furloughed two thirds of their staff, but a third of their staff, they've shifted to doing um, takeaway deliveries. And they're doing more takeaway deliveries now than they ever did when they were, when they were serving face to face. And they're doing it cheaper. They've effectively developed a new business model, a new way of capturing value, um, actually using a bit of technology. So they, 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 they were very technology enabled, but they're now using an app that they can use for uh, ordering food. And it's the crown in in Old Delby, if anybody's interested, because they're a great little business and they're keeping a, uh, the centre of the village alive. So I like, wanted to finish with just a, a nice local story from my perspective about a business that has been resilient, uh, a business that has thought carefully about how it's going to create and capture value in a very new environment. It's done an analysis of its model. It's brought some people in to do it, uh, to, to change its business model, relying on its core competencies, and it's doing something quite different as a result of the, uh, of the, of the lockdown. And they, they will survive, and I'm sure they'll, they'll thrive uh, through, the current, through the current period. So um, hopefully I've given chance, everybody a chance to think about uh, how they're going to vote and maybe actually vote. So, um, so that's the, uh, the, the interlude done from my perspective. Sorry for going on too much. And I shall hand back to, I think, Eliseo, Gary, who's going to pick it up from there? Thanks very much, Craig. Um, think, think of yourself as the uh, professional dancers while we all vote for the... Uh, <laughs> you would not want to see that, I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some very interesting points there. And I think fair to say um, some of it's come out of the Resilient Lincolnshire initiative that we've been doing. And I know you've been interviewing a lot of um, the wise and, and wary from around the county and beyond, Craig. So some great Absolutely. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, some, some really great ideas. And, and thank you for sparing us the time. I know you're very busy at the moment. Um, Eliseo, I'm hoping that the votes have all come in, particularly from the Belgian judges. Um, and in true, um, in true uh, Eurovision Song Contest style, I'll now hand back to you, sir. Thank you for um, um, giving me the opportunity to provide the awards. Mm. Uh, obviously, it's difficult to do these things because um, uh, it's about uh, people being voted. And as usual, uh, not everybody will agree with this. Anyway... We must understand that these are extraordinary teams because they have been competing with uh, in a, with 300, 203 students in 35 teams for seven different organizations. So moving from there into the four final ones is not a simple task. And, and it's difficult also recognizing that they are at this moment in time engaging in, in their final examinations for the second year. So I really appreciate their efforts and, and well, I go for the awards. As usual, it's not easy. So the first problem we have is that um, in the third position, there is a tie. 
That is what usually happens in this case. And the tie is with uh, two teams. One team is one of the Viking Science team. It's team three with Guy Lloyd. He's in he's a second runner up tied with Brad Wilson from uh, the presentation of White Seven. So our two second runner ups are Guy Lloyd and Brad Wilson, team three and four. Very good, very good work by both of them. Uh, the second position, the runner-up, is for um, another team of Viking signs. is about uh, James Allison. James Allison, team one, so he took the second position. And that uh, gave us, uh, by elimination, that gave us uh, the information that the first one is um, Bashmuka from Acts Trust. So... Congratulations to everybody. Thank you for those who vote. And obviously, many thanks to all the organizations that have been supporting us uh, for free. All of them have provided us time and effort uh, just mainly for supporting our students in this endeavor and also giving us the confidence that what they are listening uh, um, makes some sense and and well, some of them are probably thinking on going forward with this uh, in in the future. In the future, with um, with the possibilities we have through the Lincolnshire County Council, and maybe even with our students participating, but now uh, outside as consultants. So I return um, the congratulations to everybody, and I return the the, the, the microphone to uh, Craig Marsh just to give us the final words and closing remarks. Thank you. Well, so I don't know whether you're gonna be able to, uh, you don't wanna see me again, but there I am anyway. Um, so, um, so thank you so much for that and Gary. Um, and again, you know, many congratulations to, to all four teams. I mean, as everybody said, I mean, what a wonderful set of presentations. And I'm personally so proud of, of, of our students who've managed to, uh, to deliver such and I'll use the word professional presentations. I have seen um, in my many years, many companies who've done far less pro uh, professional presentations than that. So um, brilliant analyses, well done. Somebody had to win. Um, so, uh, so it's a well done to Bash Kim and the team uh, for, your, um, uh, for, your, for your victory. But, uh, but I think in these cases, as, as, uh, as Elisa has hinted, uh, there are really no losers in this one. It's, uh, it's such a, it's a good presentation. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like also um, to, just to, to reinforce Alessio's point about thanking our supporting organisations, without whom uh, obviously we wouldn't be able to, to, to maintain this kind of project. Um, I, I, I do hope if you got value out of it yourselves that you will spread the word, um, maybe come back for another dose, um, because we are always keen uh, to fulfil our contribution to our, uh, to our region um, by having this, uh, this engagement with our students, with our faculty, such that um, everybody wins, right? So our students get great projects to work on. Hopefully they learn a lot from doing that. Uh, and our companies hopefully get exposed to some really interesting ideas and thinking that will uh, help them to develop uh, their new business models, uh, if appropriate, or to think through some innovations that you may bring to your organization. So thank you all. Um, but I'd like to finish by, um, if I am finishing, I don't know whether I am, but uh, certainly from my point of view, uh, by thanking my team, uh, who put so much time and effort uh, into developing this project. Um, we've got uh, obviously we have in the background we have uh, we have Tars there who's who's doing all of the great work to 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 to, to do the uh, the master of ceremonies for this so thank you Tars um, to to Gary um, and especially to Eliseo to you for uh, having really uh, got this off the ground we've been talking about innovation you've done us so much to get this project running over the last eighteen months um, and I know we're we're losing um, most of you uh, we are managing to keep some of you Eliseo. Um, I'm not going to say which bit we are keeping. I hope it's the best bit of you, um, so, which is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is, is, is really, really good news. Um, and I know that you're going to be forging links uh, with us and with your new home uh, in, uh, in Aston. But you always have a home here in Lexington. And thank you so much for the, all of the work that, that you've done on this and uh, for all the uh, service you've given to the project. And forgive me, colleagues, but, uh, but it is an opportunity to say that to Eliseo. And I'm sure my colleagues will, uh, will reinforce that point. So thank you so much, Eliseo. Um, and I look forward to the uh, next one, uh, which I'm sure is coming up in a few months. Maybe we'll be doing that face-to-face, -face, who knows? Uh, but uh, nevertheless, we will be doing it. 
um, and uh, I'm sure um, that we'll be building on the success uh, of what has been a great project this time. So thank you, everybody.